Nothing would make me less likely to go shopping than the thought of having to mask up. Is that these things are very, very difficult for a conservative to stomach because our principal belief is in individual responsibility. And, yes. that the, and that individuals make better decisions for themselves, their families and their communities than the state can possibly make on their behalf. Now, I will make myself very unpopular. The purpose of politicians is to impose a measure of um, proportion, a sense of proportion on science and not to be enthralled to it. That the appearance of the chiefs last week should have been a sacking offence. When they presented that graph, oh, with the caveat that it wasn't a prediction, but nevertheless, it was clear that they presented it as a plausible scenario. With its 50,000 cases per day by mid-October, based on the doubling of infections by the week. Less than a year ago, I celebrated what I thought was the election of a sceptical and liberal conservative administration. And now I'm left wondering if the Prime Minister hasn't been abducted by Dr. Strangelove and reprogrammed by the sage over to the dark side. Not once, not on one day since March, have there been infections on that day that were double that of the day of the week preceding. Not once. Where did this doubling come from? What was their purpose in presenting such a graph? It was the purpose of the fat boy in Pickwick Papers. I want to make your flesh creep. It was project fear. It was an attempt to terrify the British people as if they haven't been terrified enough. Can we have a debate on censorship? Then we would be able to discuss the sinister disappearance of the link from Google to the Great Barrington Declaration, couldn't we? To what extent is there a possibility that it is the exponential increase in testing itself in identifying genuine new cases and the very significant possibility of false positives that is giving a distorted impression of the trajectory of the disease? Suppression in anticipation of vaccination is the reason for these measures before us today. But people have been writing to me for months, terrified that a vaccine will be compulsory. And I've responded by saying, don't be so absolutely ridiculous. Now we discover, now we discover that a vaccination may be a passport to the acquisition of your civil liberty, liberties. And without which you will have all sorts of things that you would be able to do denied to you discrimination. It would be vaccinationism, which we must, of course, resist. I've received representations from clinicians who've been threatened that their jobs will be taken from them because they have publicly expressed their doubts about the wisdom of the policy or indeed their doubts about the misuse or the concealment of data. I'm glad that the consensus in the scientific community is broken and the critics are speaking out. The government has armed itself with all the coercive powers of the state to tell us who we may meet, when we will meet them, where we may meet them, what we must wear. Freedom of protest has been dispensed with, as has freedom of worship. The way to persuade people to have a vaccine is of course to line up the entire government and its ministers and their loved ones and let them take it first and then get all the lovies, the icons of popular culture out on the airwaves singing its praises. The tsunami of deaths that we may, we may uh, experience shortly as a consequence of undiagnosed cancers and heart disease and the discontinuation of clinical trials is happening to our country. Another thing that any kind of coercion would do would be to set the seal on this government's reputation as the most authoritarian since the Commonwealth of the 1650s. I am appalled, absolutely appalled. So now, as we move into the vaccinated sunny uplands, 
of release and freedom. There is a danger that the state has learned a powerful lesson over the last few months, namely that the British people don't worry too much about their liberties and that they can be dispensed with conveniently when need arises.